in South Australia, recent mathematical modelling would suggest we've got about uh, 14,500 people with uh, chronic hepatitis B infection. Of those, only probably less than half have been identified as having infection, and of those, only a very small number uh, have uh, regular monitoring and uh, accessing therapy. The health outcomes of people with chronic hepatitis B infection uh, vary. Even the healthy uh, carriers, uh, so-called in the past, have a risk of uh, reactivation and therefore developing the complications which occur in, uh, in uh, the rest of the population with hepatitis B infection. And that includes um, progressive scarring of the liver, um, decompensation of the liver, that is failure of the liver. In uh, uh, a number of those people, um, even without scarring, uh, may develop uh, hepatocellular carcinoma or liver cancer. Hepatitis B is a very chronic process which happens over a lifetime, but only at certain stages of people's lives is when hepatitis B are the most problematic. In certain cases, even though hepatitis B uh, remains inactive from an inflammation point of view where the liver function tests are normal, but they may have a significantly higher risk of hepatocellular cancer or liver cancer based on their family history. And in those patients, they need to be aggressively screened for early onset of hepatocellular cancer, which can be as early as in people's 20s and 30s in certain circumstances. Uh, the most critical thing uh, to see from a referral from uh, a GP is to know where patients are at in terms of their chronic hepatitis B infection. Uh, obviously a liver function test in particular, knowing what the ALT is at that time, would dictate whether they have active inflammation or not. Uh, concurrently, obviously, uh, a positive surface angin will imply they've got chronic infection. And subsequently, knowing their E antigen and E antibody status will also know uh, in what phase of their chronic hepatitis B infection to see whether they have gone through uh, what we call immune clearance where significant scarring could have happened during that period of time. And most finally, uh, a hepatitis B DNA PCR, uh, what we call viral load of hepatitis B, will dictate how much infection they have in their bloodstream at that point in time. All of those information will help us piece together exactly where they're at in terms of the chronic hepatitis B infection. So as GPs, when we get our hepatitis B serology results back, um, they can often be quite confusing to interpret. So if you're not sure exactly what it means, uh, a very good uh, point of reference is the hepbhelp.org.au site, which provides a very simple, easy to use tool. Uh, another point uh, uh, or place that I use is the asham.org.au site, which has the uh, decision-making tool. So it's decision-making in Hep B, um, which is also freely available online. And even then, if it's still too confusing, a very good point of reference is to call the viral hepatitis nurse. We usually talk to the GP if they've done the relevant blood tests required in an ultrasound. We ask them either to fax them through to us so we can look at them. And if, if they're just a little bit unsure, the GP or myself, that we're unsure of the patient's condition, we will then show these results to one of our specialists. We, as our liaison, will then ring the GP and say, the specialist feels that this patient should be monitored in the community with you. If you're happy to, this patient will need A, B and C done six monthly or 12 monthly. Or alternatively, the specialist might say, this patient seems complex and could you please refer them in and I will manage them in the clinic. One of the things we can do for the um, patient when they come to the clinic is do a fibro scan. We're really looking at the ser severity of liver damage, the liver scarring. It's used, it's used in conjunction with blood tests and not as a standalone test. It takes, takes 10 minutes, non-invasive, simple, easy test and it's available for all patients in the clinic. Many of these people that we're testing are unaware that they're either at risk for hepatitis B or actually unaware that they have hepatitis B. Uh, these people are often unaware because um, they've acquired the infection at birth or in early childhood. Obviously chronic hepatitis B infection um, affects people from certain areas which are endemic with the virus and it's not uncommon that the virus affect multiple family members within a certain family tree. And as a result of that, those who are at risk of the virus within the family, I would strongly urge 
uh, my patient to uh, uh, inform their family members of their potential risk and then be screened for the virus as well. And those who are not infected and potentially at risk of infection in the future, uh, vaccination is an excellent option to prevent any potential risk of future uh, infection. For a GP, in terms of monitoring their uh, patients, they should be having regular liver function tests on a 6 to 12 monthly basis to ensure their liver function tests remain uh, within normal limits. And those who are at risk of hepatocellular cancer may need to have regular surveillance with liver ultrasound, which is guided by their um, uh, specialists in terms of their likely risk uh, on a six monthly basis or so. Well, the risk overall of people with uh, hepatitis B infection is about uh, one in five people developing some clinical or uh, illness associated with hepatitis B. They are going to be uh, highly complex cases which will need to be seen in tertiary centres but in, in a shared care model with general practitioners. But the vast majority of people with hepatitis B uh, infection can be uh, uh, managed uh, at, at the primary practice level. We strongly would encourage uh, general practitioners who have the interest in viral hepatitis to be involved with uh, co-sharing, co-managing these patients with specialists like ourselves so we can certainly um, uh, manage those lower risk patients in the community.